How's it going everyone? My name's John, and for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm working on getting my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. And so today, I wanted to look at another one of Dr. Maruki's counseling sessions, and this time, I wanted to look at his session with Haru Ukumura right after the death of her father. And this one is really unique in a lot of ways, and well, I don't want to spoil anything before we get into it. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of it coming from this channel, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and why not even ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload. And why not even share the video wherever you like to share things, whether that's Discord, Reddit, or anywhere else. But with all that out of the way, let's just jump into the video. Okay, so he hears the knock at the door. And here's Haru. And so we can see uh, just straight from the outset if you've been watching this channel for a while you'll probably know what i'm about to say here but even from the opening moments of a session you can start getting kind of a vibe for how it's going to go and kind of the affect of the client so in this case haru so you can see that her words are kind of trailing off as she tries to introduce herself and then you can see even from her body language, her body language is so telling throughout the course of this session, but her arms are kind of behind her back as she's looking down and making sure not to make any eye contact with Dr. Maruki. And it's likely because at this point in the story, her father had just recently passed away very publicly. So I'm sure she knows that Maruki already knows who she is and she knows that Maruki probably knows about her family situation. And all of this is compounded by the fact that now she's dealing with the stress of taking on his company, as well as the whole fiance debacle. Haru is one of the most kind of sympathetic and just, she really struggles throughout the course of this game. And I don't think she gets the credit that she deserves or the attention that she deserves. So I like what Maruki does here. And he says, oh, you're Okumura-san, take a seat. He just kind of gets straight to it, not forcing her to introduce herself to him. And he just takes the lead straight from the get-go, which I think is really great. And so black screen, we're just going to assume that's when confidentiality happens. I talk so much about confidentiality in my on video and even in my Yusuke video. So if you're interested in everything about confidentiality, go check those out because it's, it's really interesting and it's so important for a successful counseling relationship and an ethical counseling relationship. And so uh, noticing that her body language is still very closed off, her arms are kind of shielding her from him and her head is still bowed with her eyes kind of half open half closed he asks are you okay and now i don't love this this opening just in general from maruki because it feels a bit heavy-handed in this situation they're just getting to know each other she's never really been to counseling that i'm aware of before and certainly not with Dr. Maruki. And so with everything happening in her life, she's probably just struggling to find the words to, to begin. And so coming in heavy with, are you okay? The knee jerk reaction, which we'll see her say just here in a second is yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Which that does tend to be the knee jerk, but it's not exactly true either because who wants to come off as saying no i'm not okay the way i would say to reframe this is to acknowledge the situation that they're in saying i'm really glad that you came in to counseling today is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about now this leaves the question fairly open-ended for haru it kind of gets at the same idea as the are you okay but it provides her the autonomy to take the question where she wants it to go. And it isn't specifically hammering home that she's looking kind of upset. So while it's not harmful, it's not the worst thing in the world, me being kind of nitpicky would say it's probably not the best or most efficient way to start 
a session. So in general, it's just kind of a meh. And so we go on to see her say, ah, yes. She goes on to say that she's not exactly adept at verbalizing what's on her mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Maruki. And I love how he gives this genuine positive regard. Uh, but, but saying that he, him as the counselor isn't great at verbalizing what's on his mind or chatting is not exactly the first impression that you want to give to a new client because a lot of time the perception of counseling is that for the most part it is chatting or at least talking to people interpersonally uh, for a large portion of your time as a counselor and so I agree with you Marky maybe maybe you shouldn't have said that uh, but I do have to give him credit, and I have to give him credit throughout a lot of these sessions that maybe I just haven't so far. I think that a huge strength of his is that he is genuine. He's genuine. Because in a counseling relationship, if the counselor is very, you know, prim and proper, and they're just kind of listening to you, and there's a definitive power dynamic there. Like, I'm the counselor, I'm above you, and you are getting help from me. That doesn't inspire an individual to want to develop a therapeutic relationship with you as a counselor. And without that therapeutic relationship, it's going to be hard to make definitive progress. And so, while he is awkward, and I wouldn't recommend saying that you're not great at talking to people as a counselor, I, I can't exactly say that it's hugely detrimental to this session in particular. But I, it's just awkward Maruki striking again, and it kind of surprises Haru when he says this. And so... Good on him. He pivots. He pivots straight to snacks, realizing that he made things kind of awkward. And I actually really like his use of snacks as a rapport building tool. A, it's a topic of conversation. And B, it allows the counseling session to feel a bit more homey. Some counselors like using snacks. Some counselors really don't. Neither side is right or wrong. And so I think that Dr. Maruki's uh, use of snacks, <laughs> believe it or not, is actually really effective in a lot of ways to developing those relationships with these students. Because not only do students love snacks and food, if you've ever been to college, you'll know that if there's free food, a student will go. Um, but I think that uh, this helps to kind of ah, relax the session a little bit. Make it a little bit less stressful, especially since he sees she's actively stressed. She politely declines because Haru's very polite. And then there's just silence. And I love it. I love it. I, I can't say enough how much I love it. And this might be a strange thing to get hung up on, but utilizing silence in a counseling session is a genuine therapeutic skill and it's so great it's so great if you can use silence effectively in a therapeutic relationship you're able to open up the session a lot more than if you just bombard the client with questions because using that silence allows both of your brains to start kind of processing oh, what do i want to say it allows you to think things through a bit more and since she's kind of flustered already he's trying to get her to relax a little bit by mentioning the snacks you know just kind of ease into the session but now he's just letting her ruminate on her thoughts she said she's not great at articulating what she wants to say so they're just sitting which I think is really effective, as we'll see here in a second. And so, while Maruki's <laughs> fine with this silence, looks like Haru isn't. And she follows up this silence with a little bit of a self-deprecating comment, saying she's pretty weird, right? 
And so I think that Maruki's response to this is absolutely spectacular because he says, you're not weird in the least. We'll go at whatever pace you need. That's great because this genuine, unconditional, positive regard is so important in a counseling session, especially one where the client seems a little bit more closed off just in general. And he even reinforces this by saying, even if you're not comfortable by the end of the time, we can just have a little bit of tea and head home. It's spectacular to provide this reassurance, this genuine reassurance to Haru, because it's not weird at all to not necessarily know how to start with a counseling session. If you think about it, counseling seems like a strange concept just in general. Going to this person that you're not all too familiar with and talking about kind of your life and your feelings and how you're going about your day-to-day -day experiences. On paper, it seems kind of strange. It's not what we're used to doing. And so him providing that space, making sure that she doesn't feel obligated to share until she absolutely wants to is spectacular. Really spectacular. And how he reinforces this, that they can just have tea. So not only bringing it back to kind of the relaxing snack piece, but also showing that there's no pressure for her to spill her guts if she doesn't want to. This is her counseling session. It's not Dr. Marquis, and he shouldn't pry into her to get information that he wants. That should be disclosed willingly from her. Yes, some probing questions. See if there are pieces that she wants to explore. And if she doesn't, that's fine. And if she does, great, you know? Everyone takes counseling at different paces. So I'm actually really enjoying this, this session from Maruki because I think he's, aside from a little bit of a bumpy road at the beginning, I think he's doing really well. And she references that she does enjoy tea time and that might help her to relax, which is great. He's affirming. <laughs> I, yes, yes, Maruki. Him saying that no one's going to de-stress if they're thinking, I gotta talk, I need to do it right now. That adds so much extra anxiety. And he's throwing his personality into this session. No one wants to talk to, like I said, no one wants to talk to this snooty professional. He's being so understanding, giving this unconditional positive regard to someone who is very kind of closed off at the beginning, who felt really uncomfortable. He's reframing this experience. It's just sneaking away for some tea time. It's not this intimidating counseling session. It's just tea, just conversation over tea. And so reframing that in, in a way that she enjoys, she said that she loves tea, is spectacular. And that's when the best counseling happens. It's when you're just talking about something that you're interested in and somehow hey, it has this weird tendency to spin into something a little bit deeper, which we may or may not see here in a second. And just from tea, just from something that she enjoys, she talks about her family and how they're always so occupied with work. Family is something that Haru really struggles with. And we know that as the player, Dr. Maruki is just learning that now. And so it's so funny how these small little exploratory tangents actually loop back into the theme of what the individual probably came into counseling to talk about in the first place. And this isn't contrived. Uh, this isn't just for the scene in the game. 
This is a lot of times how it works, obviously to a much more abbreviated context. Most counseling sessions aren't 4 minutes, 20 seconds. But this is kind of how it would look, kind of the pace, kind of the ebb and flow in a much more abbreviated way. And often the revelations do come from these small little tangents about what they enjoy, so this tea time. And so Maruki's saying, was mealtime essentially the same setup as tea time? Just kind of that follow-up question, probing a little bit, not too much, not too little, not getting into anything too crazy deep, but just so that he can understand her situation a little bit better in a relevant way. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I'm very excited about this one because he's doing really good. He's really doing good. She says yes. And then kind of the sadness surrounding uh, how meals were typically associated with work events and it was a lot more rigid. And ah, again, another W from Maruki. Okay, so this is great because a lot of times, a lot of counselors, a lot of people in general, when having these kinds of deeper conversations that pretend like, oh yeah, I understand exactly what you mean. I've also experienced that. And so Maruki saying, I, I don't really understand what these upscale social events are like. I, I can't put myself in your shoes in this particular instance. So can you tell me a little bit about them? And acknowledging their experience is their own experience. Haru's experience is her own experience. And that you can't relate to every single thing. Because if you could, then it would just feel like that the client was just talking to themselves. If you said, yeah, I've experienced that too. Yes, I 100% get it. Yes, I understand. Maruki is being so genuine in this session and being a real compassionate person while also asking targeted counseling and relevant questions. It's spectacular. The only thing that I do have to say about this, uh, this little line here is him saying, didn't you ever feel lonely? I, I don't love that aspect of it, just because it's kind of uh, pushing that lonely word onto Haru. So if he'd said instead, if you don't mind my asking, how did those upscale events make you feel? Or how did going to these work dinners with your family make you feel? So that she could kind of start exploring her own experience. And maybe she would have come up with the word lonely. Maybe she would have said frustrating. Maybe she could have said a variety of different things, but it would have hit more at the core of what she felt instead of using Maruki's words. And so she, she repeats the word lonely and says, she wishes she could have just spent more time with her family as opposed to these larger social events, showing that her family is really important to her and saying how she wishes she just had more time for them and not having it be stuck in these snooty business meetings where she probably couldn't even really talk or maybe she just didn't want to. I can't imagine it's a comfortable environment for a child where you're probably the only child there. And so the bell rings. Ah, I want more. I want more of this session. And I do have to comment, uh, poor usage of time. I wish he had kind of managed the time better saying, is there anything else you want to chat about since they were kind of getting into some processing in terms of her family matters towards the end there. I wish he would have acknowledged that oh, we're about to end soon. Is there anything in particular you want to close out with? So that they were both on the same page and wouldn't stop so abruptly as essentially right after she was done speaking. But I do love how he says that she should feel free to stop by at any time, always welcoming her back. And if he is like this always with Haru, Ah, that's spectacular. That would be spectacular. And so 
I also love how the writers so organically in the session showed us how spoilers for Persona 5 Royal third semester. If you don't want spoilers, make sure to leave this video right now. But I love how organically they showed how he discovered what her true desire is, being with her family more. And I love it because he did it while being a good counselor. He didn't just rip it out of her and pry into her like he did with Ryuji. It came out organically through a good counseling session. And so this whole situation kind of frustrates me because it shows that Maruki can be a good counselor. He has the capability to, and I think it's such a shame that because of his awful life circumstances, which Maruki's had an awful and very difficult life up to this point, and it's really shaped him and who he is as a counselor to an absolutely immense degree, and that's why he wants to fix a lot of these people's lives so that they don't have to experience the same pain that he did. If he hadn't undergone that severe pain, I think he could have been a phenomenal counselor because I think that he would have gotten the point of counseling just a little bit more. That instead of trying to use your counseling abilities to fix people, instead he would try to use them to empower them. I feel that very strongly, that he would be a good counselor. And this session proves that to me. So I almost think it's kind of, well, I love this. And I kind of geeked out when it was so good, because honestly, I wasn't expecting a lot based on the last couple of sessions. But this was just, it, it made my heart really happy. But it also made me just wish he had a different situation because he could have been a good counselor like he was here with Haru. In the narrative, this is the last official counseling session he has, not including any uh, side conversations like with Yusuke or anything. Uh, but I am going to loop back in this next uh, counseling reacts, which will probably come out in uh, two or three weeks. I'm going to loop back to either his session with Joker or his session with Sumire. And so I have a poll live right now on the community tab so that you guys can vote which you want to see first, his session with Joker or his session with Sumire. And so I'm really excited for both of those sessions because they show a very stark difference in his counseling ability than what we see in this Haru session and why I stand by that he is not a good counselor. While he did have a great session here, he is not a good counselor. Very unethical. And so I'm really excited to cover those and show you exactly why. Although I feel like you can kind of infer <laughs> some of the reasons. But that would do it for today's video, guys. And I want to pass the question off to you. How did you like this session? Were you as excited as I was? Did you see some things that maybe I missed? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, why aren't liking this video? Why aren't subscribing to the channel? And why aren't even ringing that notification bell so you never miss another upload? And why not even sharing this video with your friends, whether it's on Discord, Twitter, Reddit, anywhere? I would really appreciate it. As always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month? And I will see you in the next video. Later.